So I started Silence of the Girls yesterday, and I actually filmed a reading vlog for it. But, a couple of things wrong with that reading vlog. One, I accidentally got high on Ambien, and so the whole reading vlog is kind of a mess because I was high on Ambien. The second thing is that there was something stuck in my teeth the whole time, and it's very distracting. Like, so distracting, at least to me, that I'm like, nope, not, not, not gonna do it. I mean, I actually had some quality things to say, considering the fact that I was high on Ambien, but that teeth thing, I did not realize that I had something stuck in my teeth, and I just kept recording, and at one point, part of my thumb was in the video, too, so, like, it was just yikes. So you're not getting that. So what you're getting instead is just a long rambly video, what I assume is going to be a long rambly video anyway, about my thoughts of The Silence of the Girls thus far. So I'll start at the beginning. So the characterization in this retelling is so good. It's astounding. Like, it captures the brutality and, like, just ruthlessness of Achilles, because obviously this is told through Briseis' perspective, and Briseis has to watch Achilles murder her own brothers right in front of her, so obviously she thinks he's a monster. And, like, I mean, to a point he is, so, like, this book really captures that, but the book also doesn't shy away from the fact that Achilles is basically, like, a very whiny child, too. So, uh, you get that, and you get the ruthlessness, and you get Achilles. Not the most flattering characterization of Achilles, but I think it's still accurate, because, like, Achilles is a whiny child who is ruthless and brutal. I can admit that about my son. He's a problematic fave. Now, Patroclus, on the other hand, is not a problematic fave. He is so good. And the book captures his kindness so well. Like, Briseis at first is like, I don't trust you. And why are you being kind to me? I don't get it. And there's a line, y'all. There is such a quality line where Patroclus goes, because I know what it's like to be given to Achilles as a toy. And I was just like, holy shit, y'all. That's amazing. So, yeah, that's, that was, that was great. And so it obviously, it obviously does very well with the characterizations of Achilles and Patroclus, but it also does really well with the characterizations of, like, Agamemnon and Odysseus and, you know, all the other people. Um... So, yeah, the characters are just real great in this retelling, and I love it to death. Speaking of death, the uh, story starts with Briseis and her home city uh, as Achilles is attacking it, and there is a lot of death. As I mentioned, she has to watch her brothers die. It is, is very haunting for her. Then, obviously, she's captured and turned into a slave for Achilles, and then, you know, the Iliad happens. Where Agamemnon, I mean, there's a good stretch of time where it's the events before the Iliad happens and it's just Briseis and Achilles and, like, Patroclus all interacting before Agamemnon decides to be a dick. So there's that. And, um, oh, Patroclus's, like, prize, technically, I guess you would say. Like, his slave, Ephias. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Um, anyway, uh, she was a prize that Achilles gave to Patroclus, like, much like Briseis is a prize, she's a prize, so I, yeah. So she's in it a lot, and I really liked that they included that, because she's mentioned, like, once in the Iliad, I think, um, and so it was really cool to, like, get to know her, um, so it was really cool, that was really cool, and it was really cool, because they introduced, um, the other... Like, they introduce, um, Crisis, you know, that's how you pronounce her name, Agamemnon's, uh, 
war prize uh, that, you know, starts the whole plague once Agamemnon refuses to give her back. That's in the book, too. Uh, it's real good. And there's also, like, Nestor's, like, slave. And there's also Odysseus' slave. And... I feel like I'm missing some, but those are all the top ones that I can remember off the top of my head. And though they're all, like, introduced and, like, real good to, like, in, like meet and stuff. Because I don't think they're mentioned in the Iliad at all. So, like, that was really cool. And, well, Crisis. Crisis might be mentioned in the Iliad because of the whole plague thing. But, um, the others definitely aren't. Um, but anyway, so it was really cool getting to know all of those characters. And the plot, obviously, is Greek mythology. It's just a retelling of what happened the Trojan War through Briseis' perspective. But it's not just Briseis' perspective. It is Briseis' perspective in the sense that most of the book is written in first person through Briseis' perspective. However, there are points in the book where it switches to third person and talks about Achilles and like basically it's like a, like once Briseis is taken away um the book obviously needed to detail important plot points from the Iliad that Briseis would have no knowledge of so it switches to Achilles perspective not first person it's third person and there are some quality Patrick Hilly's moments. Um, you get to see them fighting a lot, which is great because, you know, they weren't, like, just happy all the time, especially when Achilles refused to fight. Like, you know, they weren't just, yeah, they were, like, chilling, but Patroclus wasn't happy about it. So, it shows that. And it shows the whole giving of the armor. And it shows... Uh, well, obviously it shows Patroclus' death, uh, through Achilles' eyes. Uh, Briseis doesn't learn about it until after, like, his body is brought back. And it's really cool that they mention, um, the fighting over the body. Um, I don't think it's mentioned in the Song of Achilles that there was a war over Patroclus' body, but totally is mentioned in the Iliad. It's a big thing in the Iliad. I don't know why Madeline Miller didn't mention that, if she didn't mention that. My memory could just be weird, and she may have mentioned that, but I don't recall there being mention of it. I don't know. We'll find out in March, because I'm rereading it in March. But anyway, so... Uh, I really, I really appreciated that, and I just got to the point where Patroclus is haunting Achilles and is like, bury us in one urn together, and I'm just like, yes! So, yeah, the Patroclus content in this book is great, even though it's from Briseis' perspective. Um, like, the most of the book is from Briseis' perspective. There are moments, like I said, that aren't from Briseis' perspective that are, like, you know, just third person about Achilles, and usually they're about Achilles and Patroclus. Usually. They're all about Achilles and Patroclus, I believe. So, that's really cool. I am probably going to finish it tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to finish it tomorrow, though. I might finish it the day after. I don't, I don't know when I'm going to finish it. It depends. But hopefully I finish it soon. I'm sorry that this is all one long video instead of like, you know, like broken up into bits because, you know, ambient highs just aren't good for making videos. So, you're getting, you're getting this angle. I actually look lit really well. This is my laptop, y'all. Like, it's just my laptop. Didn't feel like turning on my lamp, so... Yeah, this is surprisingly really well lit and I'm like kind of shook actually so I finished the silence of the girls tonight and I really enjoyed it honestly like I already talked about how much the characters are like good and I already talked about like how it was really cool to see like the new 
slaves. So I'm not sure what to talk about. I mean, like, there was some more iconic Patrick Hilly's things that I was all about. And, like, the stuff that happened with Briseis, I actually had no idea, like, what actually happened to her after the Iliad, because I don't think it's stated in the Iliad. And it's not stated in the Song of Achilles either, and I haven't done, like, proper research on Briseis. All of my research has been about Achilles and Patroclus. So, yeah, I didn't know. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't done, I still haven't done any research on Briseis. Uh, the, uh, book could be completely wrong, but I, I feel like it's not, so I'm just gonna take the book's word now until I do my own research and then find out, like, what happened to Perseus after the Trojan War. But, uh, yeah, so that was interesting. I got to see that. Anyway, the book ended really well. Like, so well. I was like, yep. There's Achilles and Patroclus' ashes mixed together. And then she was, like, kind of sad, but then she was, like, not sad at the same time. I got up to get my book. You would think I would get up to get... You would think I turn, would turn on the light, but nope. I'm going to read this from the screen of my laptop. So here we go. What will they make of us, the people of those unimaginably distant times? One thing I do know, they won't want the brutal reality of conquest and slavery. They won't want to be told about the massacres of men and boys, the enslavement of women and girls. They won't want to know we were living in a rape camp. No, they'll go for something altogether softer. A love story, perhaps? I just hope they manage to work out who the lovers were. Like, y'all! Y'all! That was such a good... It, it wasn't the very ending quote, but it was like, one of the ending quotes and like so good that really hit me hard i was just like oh my god you're so right but uh anyway this book was really good and uh yeah those are my thoughts uh if you want like if you want to ask me some specific questions about like what i thought of the book like feel free to do so I hope you enjoyed this short reading vlog, because it was only two videos, and I will see you in the next one.